Hi everyone, this is Matt Touchot with Intro Stats, and today we're looking at a problem from my book. Uh, this is section uh, 4A, number 34. So we're going to use a randomization hypothesis test or randomization approach to test a, a, a two population uh, mean hypothesis. So let's look. Uh, it says uh, we're going to use the commute time data, Atlanta versus St. Louis. So this took a random sample of people from Atlanta, population 1, and a random sample of people from St. Louis, population 2. Using randomized simulation at a 5% significance level, we want to test the claim that the mean average commute time in for people in Atlanta is greater than the mean average commute time for people in St. Louis. So we're testing that Atlanta is greater than St. Louis in terms of their population mean average commute time. So I'm going to do mu1 is going to be population mean average commute time for Atlanta, and mu2 will be St. Louis. So again, our claim will be mu1 is greater than mu2. That's going to be an alternative hypothesis because it doesn't have an equal to. And then mu1 probably equal to mu2 will be our null. Okay, so let's uh, go ahead and look at that. Now this is a randomized simulation, so and again it looks like we have two separate groups, so we're going to go with test for difference in means, so randomization, hypothesis test, test for difference in means in stat key. I think it told you what to click on in the problem. Okay, so they said it's a built-in data set. Let's see if it's here. We're looking for, let's see, commute time, Atlanta versus St. Louis. There it is, the second one up. All right, so there we go. We got uh, Atlanta's commute time. The sample mean was 29.11. Uh, sample mean for St. Louis is 21.97 with a 7.14 minute difference. All right, so notice the null hypothesis, mu1 equals mu2. So we do the simulate. We're going to basically create random samples under the assumption that this null hypothesis was true. So if we generate a few thousand random samples, we said this was a right-tailed test because it was greater than, so this is going to be right tail. Uh, what significance level do they tell us to use? 5%. So let's we're going to use 5% significance level there. So let's change this tail percentage to 0 0.05. So this is the tail for 5% significance level. So the tail looks like it starts at a difference of 1.93. So the computer thinks that any difference above 1.93 would be significant. Well, our difference, our original sample difference was 7.14. 7.14 is way over here, so it's definitely in the tail. So that means our original sample data is significant. In other words, the sample means for Atlanta and St. Louis are significantly different, and the sample data significantly disagrees with the null hypothesis. I know that because it's because my sam original sample mean difference is in the tail. Now that's not a p-value though; that's a significance level. So now we got to find the the p-value. The p-value is the probability that this original sample difference happened. This sample data right here. So we're going to use the 7.14 difference. So I'm just going to put that into the bottom box where the where the differences go. And there we go. So we got it looks like we got a zero p-value. So we have a very low p-value. It's unlikely to be sampling variability. That means we're going to reject the null hypothesis. Um, the claim was the alternative hypothesis that um, the uh, Atlanta commute time is greater than St. Louis. And it looks like we are going to support that because we rejected the null, so we're supporting the alternative hypothesis. Um, so there is significant evidence to support the claim that the population mean average commute time for Atlanta is higher than for St. Louis. Uh, the question also asked, could you calculate the t-test statistic? Now, we really didn't need the t-test statistic. We already know the p-value, and we know that it was in the tail. But if you wanted to calculate it, all you got to do is take the sample difference right here, 7.14, and divide by this standard error number right here. I got 1.156. If you divide those two, you'll get the approximate t-test statistic. It'll be very significant t-test statistic. By the way, again, all these numbers I'm showing you, uh, remember these are random, randomized simulations, so that means your numbers won't be exactly the same as mine. 
Um, my random samples are not the same as your random samples, so you might get slight variations in the standard error, slight variations in um, maybe the tail or things like that. I think we're probably all going to get a zero p-value though. All right.